Trigonelline increases NAD in blood, liver, and muscle. But these data are in mice. What about in people? So to test that, for 10 days, I supplemented with 500 milligrams of supplemental trigonelline per day. And note that that's a seven-fold increase above my usual trigonelline intake from diet. My usual intake is around 70 milligrams per day, so 500 milligrams supplemental, seven-fold increase. So to find out, I sent blood to Genfinity for NAD analysis. If you want to measure your own NAD levels, discount link in the video description. For a June 28th test, NAD levels were 17.1 micromolar. So unfortunately, supplemental trigonelline did not increase NAD, didn't impact it at all. How do we know this? So how does this 17.1 micromolar compare against previous tests? So now we're going to take a look at 20 tests for NAD from early 2023 to 2024, as shown here. And at the bottom, bottom right, we can see the most recent test. And then without going through each of the tests, I've covered each of these tests in the NAD playlist, which I'll link in the right corner. We can see that 17.1 micromolar is my lowest NAD test over all 20 tests. So does that mean that there will be no more future trigonelline NAD experiments, as it seems that at least 500 milligrams of trigonelline supplemental doesn't impact NAD? So there is one last question to be addressed. Was plasma trigonelline greater than seven micromolar? And I've used seven micromolar as that cutoff because my highest dietary intake uh, of trigonelline was able to push plasma trigonelline to 6.9 micromolar. So if plasma trigonelline was not higher than seven micromolar, that suggests that 500 milligrams of supplemental trigonelline wasn't enough to impact plasma levels. And if that's the case, how, if, I can't, if I don't get an increase in plasma levels of trigonelline, is it reasonable to expect that NAD shouldn't, shouldn't increase either? So if that's, if that's not true, if trigonelline did not push plasma trigonelline to greater than 7 micromolar, then I'll potentially increase supplemental intake of trigonelline to 1 gram or more per day. But if, if plasma trigonelline was greater than 7 micromolar, that argues against the role for relatively higher intakes of dietary and supplemental trigonelline on impacting NAD, at least for me. Maybe it's different for other people. Uh, I'd encourage others to do that experiment. To find out on for the June 28th test, I also sent blood for metabolomic analysis using ILO's kit, which includes measurement of uh, plasma levels of trigonelline. So stay tuned for that data uh, in an upcoming video as it should be arriving any day now. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NED quantification, or microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, but also Grimage, green tea, diet tracking with Chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.